And we're back for another exciting week of the Creators Collective. This is going to be a fun one as for the first time in a while, it's actually just the three of us. So we get to uh, kind of let our hair down and relax for a bit. <laughs> I do want to say a huge thank you to our patrons on Patreon, uh, especially Darren Mates. You are our top patron this week. Thank you for that. Thanks, Darren. If you'd like to help us out with that, you can go uh, Patreon and uh, look up the Creators Collective. We are uh, currently working on uh, getting some shirts out and uh, um, thinking about working that into the, the Patreon system. So if that's something you'd like to know, let us know about. Uh, wow, not that much going on this week. So uh, let's dive into what we're actually working on. Zach, what you got? Um, where's my list? Here we go. Um, so I put out a video, I think it was last week. I don't think I talked about it at the last, the last uh, get together we had. But it was of the uh, Indian Indianapolis uh, maker hangout thingamabob, and uh, there's it was just such a good opportunity. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys have seen that yet. It's kind of a bigger one. I think it's like 30, 40 minutes or something. Um, but yeah, initially I went there and I was thinking like, oh, I'm gonna make a video about like my new press and me smashing metal and stuff on it. But after hanging out with a couple of these guys uh, that are, I would say, definitely some of the best. Uh, smiths in the country i just kind of decided to like put all the the, put all the video of them doing their thing up and uh it was such an inspiring experience so that was that that's new um also this is like the first time this has ever happened to me but i have i have a backlog of projects that i just need to edit the video i think i have like three or four projects that are completely finished and just because of travel and everything, I just haven't had the chance to sit down and actually turn them into videos. So, um, yeah, and I upgraded to Final Cut Pro, which is... No, uh, from, boo. <laughs> it's, it's a lot more versatile than iMovie. So I'd say it's a step in the right direction. Will hates, Adobe. Will, Will hates everything about anything electronic that i use <laughs> hates my computer hates my editing i don't hate your editing i like your editing you hate this mouse i hate this I mouse. Do. <laughs> <laughs> the apple mouse where you have to charge it from the bottom of the mouse so when you're charging it you can't use it brilliant so that's why um, I have one with like 17 buttons and I have them all memorized. I have another one. Cut, copy, paste. I have another one here that I bought so that I can use it when I'm charging my Apple mouse, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But <laughs> How often do you have to charge the thing? <laughs> Not very often, but it's, um, you know, it it's always, into, like, it's always like, project. right when you, yeah. yeah. Although that reminds me, something amazing happened to me last week. Um, I was making a die for my press and I was welding the steel onto the, uh, thing, <laughs> the, the plate. And, uh, right as I was finishing the well, right as I was finishing the weld, I ran out of welding wire, like on the very, literally right after it was the perfect time. You never run out of like wire. It never happens. It was it's like the, the welder's equivalent of like winning the lottery. It was literally the last thing I needed to weld for the day and I ran out of wire and it was, I was actually happy. I was really, <laughs> it made me excited, which was amazing. So, uh, <clears throat> let's see what else is new video. Um, oh yeah. So as far as projects, um, that plasma cut sign that I did had cut out when I was in, uh, Cleveland a couple months ago for the Lincoln electric thing. Mm -hmm. That's just been sitting here waiting for a thumbnail, which is the thing that I dread the absolute most of any project. The thing that I hate the most is setting up the thumbnail picture because it's like so important. It's more important than the project. Like if I screw something up in the project, I can fix it. Uh, the thumbnail shot has to be perfect. If it's not, nobody will see anything. It's really, so it's really stressful. Like I get anxiety when it comes to actually like just taking a picture. It's the most stress like of the project. It's the most stressful part of the whole build always. So since I have all those projects accumulated, I have, um, yeah, I have the, the, the sign thing that's coming out hopefully this weekend. I have, um, that stool 
that some of you guys have seen. I haven't actually posted any like finished products on my Instagram because I want to wait until I have it the video out. Uh, that stool is going to come out the week after that. And then I just did an anvil stand uh, so that I have a photographer coming out today to um, hopefully shoot pictures or thumbnails, all three of those. <laughs> I'll pile up and I'm like, well, you know, if I just pay somebody else to take the pictures, I don't have to be stressed out about taking the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I have like all this camera gear and, and all this stuff and, you know, I don't mind taking pictures for Instagram and stuff. But when it comes to a, a YouTube thumbnail, like I just gladly wash my hands and pay somebody <laughs> else to do it because I it's so stressful. Wow. Um, I've never had that much stress for a YouTube well, thumbnail. But if you I, I mean, the lighting in my shop is horrendous. Um, it's super cluttered. I have no good backdrops. I have no like mobile lighting. I mean, I'm going to get there, but part of the reason th this is the same guy that shot the thumbnail for that big sculpture. Uh, he's, he's really good. Um, but part of the reason I'm paying, I'm having him do this stuff is like, he can kind of show me and I want him to come out to my shop and kind of say, well, your lighting sucks. Here's what I would do. I would buy this thing and put it here and do this. And ho hopefully, uh, in addition to actually getting the pictures taken, I can, um, you know, get, get some coaching on how to best shoot things in my shop and some lighting and stuff. So that's well, kind of the, the, the photo that you did for the photos that you did for that hammer that you just auctioned off. That, those were awesome. Those were great. Um, but those are nice and small and easy to photograph. Like most of the stuff I build is half the size of my shop and there's just shit everywhere in my shop behind it. And I, I don't know, like I just, I feel like, do you not build a, a simple pull down seamless backdrop holder like in the ceiling of your shop? Maybe. Um, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of what I'm thinking as far as having this guy come out. Um, just so that he can kind of walk me through and be like, all right, I can say, like, here's the normal size of the stuff I have difficulty photographing, like how how would you do this? And hopefully I can kind of pick his brain a bit. And he gave me a bunch of advice as far as some equipment last time we, we did stuff. So, um, yeah. Hey, where's the, uh, do we have the link to the, uh, YouTube chat? Cause I don't have it. I just realized I don't have it open. Yeah. It's yes. in the, the Facebook group <laughs> the Facebook chat. Oh, I'm trying uh, to find it. Am I done right. talking yet? I, th I think else? you are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Will? Uh, man, uh, I am, I've been dragging my feet on this dining table. Um, I finally got the pedestals all milled and glued up, and they're about, I'd say, 35, 40 pounds each. Um, so I've got to turn those, and I'm, like, kind of scared of it, but also like excited but mostly nervous about making a match and not screwing up um uh, i just turned uh a live edge uh bowl out of dogwood yesterday at the end of the shop day uh, kind of a shop meditation and i needed some footage for my film school friday that should get released tomorrow um i'm doing a film school friday on music for videos and where to find music, how to use music, how to uh, create mood in a scene um, with the soundtrack that you choose and showing different examples of that. Um, so that should be a, a pretty good one. Um, I just, I finally did my first online social media auction uh, of, of one of the pieces that I make. Um, so trying to make money from the pieces that I want to make versus uh, making money from commissions from other people. Uh, so it was a, mulberry, a live edge mulberry charcuterie board uh, with curly maple bow ties. And uh, I only got one bidder and that was kind of disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it met my goal of how much I wanted to make off the piece. So uh, that I guess is, you know, better. So I'm going to auction off this, um, this live edge dogwood bowl. Uh, once I release the video, I'll put it out on Instagram and uh, and Facebook and, and 
auction it off. And cool. I have to go for, I don't know, three days or so, like a three day auction. Um, and what else? Still, still getting ready for this big pool project. Um, so I've been meeting with, I met with the plumber yesterday, uh, just trying to get my head in order. Um, but other than that, it was kind of a, a slow week, kind of a quiet week for me. Um, what about you, James? Uh, well, for me, the week has been uh, revolving around um, the, the dining room table. <laughs> as, as I finally got uh, the, the, the epoxy reapplied to it and uh, got that all cured because it takes you know three to four days of sitting before I want to even move them because they're still a little bit soft. Uh, it takes an entire week to get them to the point where they're toolable. Uh, but the, the finish on it is just absolutely incredible. It's just perfectly, perfectly clear, and I can see all the way down to the blue underneath, and I'm, I'm, I'm in love with the epoxy. Uh, but yesterday, uh, they finally got to the point where I got to pick them up and joint the edges. So I, uh, you know, how do you joint a 200-pound slab to another 200-pound slab? <laughs> with, with hand tools gravity and, <laughs> uh, because they're, they're, they're thick enough that you know i can't clamp any bow out of it there if there's any amount of of gap it's there uh, they're they're not going to bend <laughs> so they've got to have a perfectly tight joint um over 11 foot long and two inch wide slab edge uh, so that was a, a fun one, um, and the video on that should be out uh, Saturday. I think I'll have that all done. But then I, I got them up on the bench, and I'm ready to cl actually clamp the two together, and then I suddenly realize I have enough clamps, but the table is bigger than I remember. <laughs> it's the first time I've had them jointed and actually together, and my, my brain was thinking, you know, at the widest point, it's 48 inches, four foot across. Um, but actually, no, the 48 inches is the narrowest point the widest point of the table is 60 inches across. Um, That's a so banquet table. Yeah, it's, it's a big, big table. Um, <laughs> and it's enough that I can sit 16 people around it comfortably with, you know, two and a half feet of clearance on either side. It's, it's a big, big table. And um, yeah, so I have enough clamps, but I don't have enough clamps that are long enough. I only have four clamps that are wide enough to 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 span this thing so i you know i have to get this glued up in order to get things ready for the video so i was like well let's uh let's run and buy 200 dollars worth of clamps <laughs> so so i got more clamps in my shop now um but yeah it, it's sitting here all clamped up and i'm looking at it just drooling because uh, hopefully this weekend i'm gonna actually then do the final flattening on the top um, cause I've gotten everything close with the, the two separated, but now I'm going to do the, uh, um, the router bed, really big router bed to then flatten this whole slab into one big coplanar surface. Um, and then, uh, then smooth it out and actually start working on it. So I'm going to, I'm going to smooth out the top, then flip the whole thing over, flatten and smooth the bottom. Um, and then with the bottom flattened and smooth and the whole thing upside down on the bench, I'm going to then build the trestle base upside down on top of the table. Uh, and that way I can, I don't have to flip it back and forth too many times um, because flipping it back and forth requires people to come over and help me maneuver this 400 plus pound slab around. And uh, then once the trestle is built, I can disassemble this trestle because the, the entire trestle will be put together without any glue. It'll just be held with gravity and, uh, and joints. So every board will be able to disassemble and come apart from moving. And I can take that upstairs, then flip the table back over and do a final smoothing and finish of the top and sides and then get uh, a group of people to come over and help me move the thing upstairs. So, yeah. Yeah. If you want to see uh, pictures, um, Instagram, I was able, it was the first time I got a chance to look at the underside of the slab that leaked and it was absolutely incredible. Um, just the, the, some of that. You had the, a picture of that, right? it was, Yeah, it was I was like, oh, I've got to do some artistic thing with this in the future and intentionally spill the epoxy. <laughs> it was, it was absolutely. Um, that table is insane. Yeah. Part of me is thinking, you know, is there some way I can actually keep this on the bottom? Um, but yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's been my week. Um, it's been an interesting one. 
Let's see, do we have any uh, questions from the live chat? We do. Um, Bland Bland uh, has a really good question, uh, especially since we're talking about, um, you know, Zach making hammers. Um, the, do you prefer to make or buy your own tools? Zach, Maybe. since you make hammers, why don't you start us off? <laughs> um, I think it really depends. I don't think I'm not going to say like, oh, you have to make your own tools or, oh, it's not worth your time. Go buy a tool. I think it really depends on your mindset. I mean, I really enjoy the process and the learning of things. So I find a lot of value in if I'm able to make my own tools, I think that it's a good, it's, and I'm doing, I'm saying this with, you know, forging stuff in mind. Um, you know, for the best example I can think of are tongs, like blacksmith, like fire tongs. So you need like pretty much for everything, every different shape of object that you're <laughs> heating up and pounding, you need a different tong for it. I mean, the, the, you need you, you see like a blacksmith shop and they have like a hundred pair of tongs and they use all of them. Uh, so the issue there is that <clears throat> building them sucks. Making tongs is like, it takes a really long time to do them right and to do them well. I mean, if you, I'm sure if you build a hundred of them, you, you get a system down. I've made like three or four pair. And even now it still takes me a couple hours to make one pair and you can buy a really nice set for like 40 bucks. So it's definitely not worth in this case, it's not worth your time really to build them, but it is such a good skill building exercise. There's a lot of, um, techniques and 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 things that that are involved in making those that really i think makes you a better smith and i'm, I'm just using this as an example i think it it carries over to a lot of different situations to where uh building you know I, and, and also i think building a tool is like one of the most empowering things uh that i didn't expect to feel so good about but there's so much satisfaction involved with making a tool that you know you're going to use over and over and over for as long <laughs> as you're working you know when even those like tongs and the hammers and stuff that i made uh it's a really cool feeling when you put those together and you know that like 150 years from now it's going to be in like some box of shit at a garage sale that somebody's gonna be like oh what's this who's zh this is weird you know like it's gonna outlast like all of those tools are gonna outlast me uh, which is a, it's a really cool feeling. Um, and that's, like I said, that's just my analog when it comes to forging stuff. But the same thing I'm sure is, you know, with, with any tool that you're making, I think that there is certainly a valuable experience and education that is involved as well as satisfaction. Like if you've never made a tool, uh, I mean, James, I'm sure you can, and w Will, you've done, I mean, we've all made tools before. Um, there's just it's more satisfying than you would expect i mean like james you made a few hand planes like isn't that amazing when you build something and it works yeah like uh, it's, it has function other than just you know being a table or yeah <clears throat> um not that that's not satisfying <clears throat> but it's a whole new level and you know yeah i think for me the, the 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 thing is whether or not if it's something that i that i want to interact with in other words it's not a tool just to to, to bang out a project um, for that, you know, I'm just going to go and get a tool that is functional. Uh, but if it's something that I really want to interact with, like a, like a, a saw handle or a plane, and it, it makes a big difference on how it feels to me, then I want to make it and it's well worth my time spent mm -hmm. to detail it to the way I feel, the way I grip my hand, the way I work. Uh, yeah. But if it's something I really want, you know, high precision, like, um, a grooving plane, uh, not, not a grooving plane, but like a, a combination plane. Um, there's, there's a high precision needed in the, the, the sliding bars and, and all the, the tools and pieces that have to go together in it. Uh, and that's not as much the, you know, sensual, sensual connection to it. In that case, you know, I'm going to go buy something. Mm -hmm. and, but and even like, then I like having a combination of the two because there's times when I just want to grab something I know is going to work and I don't have to fiddle with it. And there's other times where I want to, I want something to make me feel good. Yeah. And, and uh, Will, I mean, not to leave you out of this because you've obviously <laughs> made your own tools as well. No, I'll, I'll jump right in in any second. Do it. Yeah. How no. about it? Go. <laughs> All right. Um, I love like my, the favorite tools in my shop 
uh, are the ones that I've made. So like my my marking gauges, mm-hmm. uh, like I love making a marking gauge. Your, your kabuki um, or whatever. The, uh, called, kabiki, what's it called? Kabiki. 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 Yeah, my kabiki, my live edge kabiki. Um, I love that thing, and I've got the uh, you know eye gauging carbide wheel one, and I don't prefer it. I I always grab my my shop made one first. Um, unless I'm setting up like a million mortises, then I'm going to use every marking gauge that I have in the shop um, and have them each set to a certain thing. Um, but like that and my tri square um, that I made a while back, uh, I I grab that more than my speed square like all the time. And it's still dead accurate. I check it all the time because it's wood movement and things like that. Yeah. But um, I, I personally like that, you know, you can't just go out and buy that tool, uh, you know, and then I've, I've got the only one of that uh, or the only two of that, you know, that I made. Uh, um, so, yeah, I mean, like James said, if it's going to be something that really takes high precision with moving parts and, you know, like a, uh, like the square that James is talking about, like I'm not going to go out and make – like a, a rabbiting plane or what's the James, what's the, the one with the the Stanley plane that has all the 45 or 55, the 55. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not going to make that. So, you know, I'm going to go out and buy it, but I don't know. There's a certain, a certain satisfaction to making your own tools, but yeah. Yeah. And, and also, I mean, on the other uh, note, there's also th- there are times where if I'm in the middle of a project and yeah. I'm like, oh, I need something to get this done. Like, I'm not going to take the time. That's not that's not a good time for me to to experiment with making a tool. I mean, sometimes you you know, if if the goal is to finish the project and you're kind of in a time crunch or you're just really not interested in making the the certain piece uh, there's certainly, that's a good time to go out and buy something. So, and also, you know, on the same thing is I think that it, uh, and I'm just thinking uh, the most recent thing in my mind example of this is obviously forging, uh, tongs. So that's kind of where, where I'm looking at for uh, in light of this subject. Um, it's hard to make something if you don't have experience using one that is made properly. Like, you know, if you're trying to build a hand plane and you've never used a hand plane, you don't have a good reference. So it's probably going to suck if you're trying to make yes. tongs and you have no experience using a good set of tongs, it's going to be very hard for you. So there are certain times when I, I think that, you know, if you have no experience with something, you should probably own one before you start, you know, uh, trying to replicate it or trying to make your own version. So yeah, I mean, I think it depends, but it's, I wouldn't not build one because it's too intimidating. Uh, I don't think that's a good excuse. Yeah. If you're dreading doing something because the skills are beyond your capabilities, that's I the think reason to do it. That's a cop out. <laughs> um, you know, just take your time and be methodical. And the amount of satisfaction that you get from doing things that are in- intimidating, that's the best satisfaction you're ever going to get. If something is, uh, very mundane and easy for you, you're not going to get that same level of satisfaction when you finish it. So, I mean, be ambitious and, and methodical and you'll be happy. Now, along that line, we have another question from uh, Moonshine Metalworks. Uh, is it better to have a whole lot of cheap clamps or fewer but more premium clamps? I'm as cheap as they go when it comes to clamps. Um, I'm a Craigslist addict uh so anytime that i see uh you know a bunch of clamps that someone's selling you know that came out of their grandpa's shop or basement or garage um, i'm all over it um and they're most of my clamps are um pony clamps which are is now defunct um i don't know if you guys knew that but uh, pony went out of business and i can't remember who just bought who bought that company. Uh, But now they moved their operations to China, cheap Chinese metal, I don't know. Um, But I only actually own one premium clamp 
um, you know, it's a jet parallel clamp. And I honestly don't prefer it to the good old fashioned bar clamps. Um, that being said, some of the cheap Harbor Freight F style clamps are pretty cheap and they don't give you as good of clamping power as, uh, as a nicer Bessie. Their bar clamps are actually, I find, that are, are actually pretty decent. Though. The, like the, the actual long bar ones. I think it really depends on what your application is. I mean, there are certainly clamps that are too cheap that you should have nothing to do with. But if, I mean, it's function over form. Like the nice ones might have less deflection and, you know, they're obviously going to cost a lot more money. Uh, you know, so I'd say... I mean, it really, you have to have to, have to kind of look at the situation and what you need to do. Um, you know, if you have a couple of good clamps and then a lot of crappy clamps, I think that's a good way to start because you can mm-hmm. actually do all your uh, aligning with the good ones and make sure everything's flat. Um, you know, I like the ones that actually stand up off of the table or something so that you have a flat reference when you're putting your, you know, if you're doing a big glue up and once you get that locked down, you can use all the crappy clamps in the world just to add tension to the piece. So, um, you know, in a perfect world, it'd be, it'd be great to have all nice clamps, but, uh, no, I totally, I totally agree. I think the pipe clamps are like, those are my most reached for clamps in my shop like a tabletop glue up like you said zach you know if you have got a flat reference service they kind of stand up off the table you can almost use the clamps as calls to make sure that your tabletop yeah. ends up flat um and then yeah you can put all the crappy ones on top and who cares if the if the bars bend you know yeah. like the f style clamps yeah as um, long as you have a good starting point i think you're you know with with the additional clamps you're just looking to add tension to the piece not so much line them up so it's not quite as important yeah what i also like about the the pipe clamps is if you need a longer clamp you just go buy a piece of pipe (laughs) yeah and and extend it like where you're spending you know 50 bucks on the premium clamps you know per clamp and you're on into a situation oh this clamp isn't long enough um then what do you do you have to join them together now you're you know 100 bucks in clamps uh but yeah, I don't know. Did we answer that? <laughs> I think so. I have this brass pen and I just noticed it smells funny. <laughs> I've been like, well, on that note, <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like this weird metallic smell. It's not like stinky. It's just weird. Anyway, sorry. If anybody's wondering why I'm smelling a pen, it's. <laughs> Here's our name for the uh, episode: How to smell your pens. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys remember the old like scratch and sniff like uh, pencils and stuff? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. In markers, like when they had sent that had to be healthy. I wonder why they did away with those. <laughs> Kids sniffing their markers in kindergarten and stuff. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's dive into our uh, creators photo challenge because it is the uh, every other week we will do a photo challenge where we. Um, give you something to shoot in your shop and post it up on Instagram. And then we look at them and judge you. (laughs) But it's actually a really good chance of uh, winning something because usually there's only, uh, what, uh, 12 to 20 or so entries. And we pick the uh, the one that we like the most and send them something from one of the three of us. And this week, actually, is something from Will's shop. So, Will, what are they winning? I was looking at it. There's 163 posts from the creator's photo challenge hashtag. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's catching on. People are, are, uh, are liking it and I'm liking seeing what people come up with every, every, every week. So and like this week, it's funny cause it was, you know, the minimalism or minimalist or whatever. Like it totally looks like, it looks like Ben Ueda's, um, Instagram page. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so many, like just it's everything's so clean. It looks like a catalog. It's it's amazing how like if you scroll down to like our last Photoshop challenge, it's just kind of a good smattering. Then you go up and everything is like I mean, it seriously looks like a magazine or something. It's it's amazing. <laughs> so anyway. So Will, uh, what are they gonna win? Uh, you're going to win a set of William Walker Company White Oak Coasters. A set nice. of four coasters. Yeah. 
Um, and so I'm just going to jump right in and give you my top two. Um, my top two were McAllister Home. Uh, it, it was just a simple photo. It looked like it was maybe um, a shelf detail, like a floating shelf detail with edge grain and end grain. And the lines were just just beautiful. It was simple. It was minimalist. Um, just a, an all-around interesting photograph of some, something that's somewhat mundane. Um, and then I got I to gotta say my buddy, Scott Hahn, um, he took a photo of some tools that he uh, is restoring uh, on just a simple white backdrop. And it's just clean, minimalist, straight lines, uh, just a, a good, good photo. Um, Scott is actually a photographer, so I don't know if we should take away points or not for, for that. But um, James, who did you have? Well, I had, uh, you can make this too. Um, mm -hmm. And now I got to pull this up and remember which one it was. <laughs> Is it this, uh, why didn't I have this up earlier? Too, too busy editing the sheet. Yeah, he had this uh, a table with uh, um, hairpin legs and uh, it's uh, uh, um, shallow depth of focus. There's what I'm looking for, but with a black background. It just really drew the eye. I love the lighting on it. It was just, well done. Really, really like that one. Um, and then uh, number two was handcrafted by Ons. Uh, he had a, a simple picture. This time. Yes, he had a simple picture of a uh, of a screw and a board, um, which I you know, I don't know if you can get any more minimalistic than that. It's a, a spack screw with a Torx head, but the the shadow line coming off of it was just really eye catching. Um, I, I enjoyed the picture. It was a, a good way of getting very detailed and, and showing the, uh, the amount of detail in something so little that someone would overlook. I, I really enjoyed that. What about you, Zach? Uh, there's, there's some good ones. Um, so William yours is really cool, but I'm not going to vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I understand. Why is my thing not working? Um, my Instagram just like locked up, but Good thing I wrote down my answers. Uh, Scott Hahn is is definitely one of mine, and uh, they already described it. it's just very clean shot of some tools over a white background. I think it really hits the the theme of the the contest. And uh, my other one is uh, Derek's that the screw with the shadow. It's just, I mean, it's so simple that you look at it and you think there's got to be more. It's almost like it's so it's deceptively simple. You look at it and you're like you want to like pull some sort of like life meaning out of the picture or something. I don't know. It's uh, so yeah, those are my two. Well, we've got a tie uh, between uh -oh. the two you just mentioned, Scott Hans and Derek, uh, Scott Han and Derek Ons. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. Um, and since you pick both of them, Zach, you get to, to pick oh which one. Do you prefer. Oh, <laughs> <sighs> Man, do you like a screw and a board, or do you like uh, um, Scott Hans, which I can't remember what it was? You know, oh, this is tough. I'm just because, well, man, shipping would be cheaper for me if you pick Scott. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I know Derek pretty well, he lives pretty close to me, he's been over to my shop a few times. Um, so you know, I should you know, by favoritism, pick him. But then again, like one day, you know, I come home after one of our podcasts where I was talking about how I have like one battery for my camera. I showed up and anonymously, although I later found out it was from Scott, there was a bunch of batteries for my camera and stuff on my porch. They shipped me. Um, man, I'm making this really so, hard. Just so yes, this harder. You, you know, I'm you gonna go with buy Scott. the winner. I'm going to go with yeah. Scott because you uh, Scott. I'm going to go with Scott because Derek already has some of my swag and well, I guess you're sending it. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll, I'll do something cool for Derek next time he comes over to my shop. Cool. Well, uh, right. Scott Hahn, why don't you uh, get in touch uh, with Will and he'll uh, send you some coasters. Yeah. And, was, uh, he, bought, he actually has my old bandsaw. He bought my old bandsaw. Oh, so. Really? Yeah. Well, cool. There's there's some really good stuff though. I like this one. Uh the wireless woodworker. Mm, yeah. Just like mm. the geom the perfect proportion of that scroll is just like he's chiseling uh 
he's got a chisel and he's um what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> chiseling yeah uh, but there's uh, the just fibonacci, like the fibonacci curl yes it's like okay. the perfect scroll it's just it's so you just want to look at it uh and then also uh Tom from McAllister home was really good. And he's the guy that I don't know if you guys can see here. So I made, this is the first hammer that I made and this off on my Instagram and, uh, he bought it. It sold for 175 bucks. Wow. So yeah, I'm probably going to be making more hammers in the future. Um, so yeah, I'm going to send this to him and some other stuff as well. So shout out to Tom. Thank you. You own number one. See, it says number one there. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Will, what, what do we have for the next photo challenge? So the next photo challenge, um, we are going to utilize um, the rule of thirds. So in photography, if you take the frame and you uh, dissect it into three parts horizontally and three parts uh, vertically. Um, so if you took a frame and you just drew... A tic-tac-toe board. Yeah, basically make a tic-tac-toe board out of the frame. And then you put a subject um, on any of those intersection points. Um, those are mentally, visually, uh, like power, power points. Uh, um, so it's a very much mental thing. If you look at uh, some of the most famous photographs, like uh, The Afghan Girl by Steve McCurry, famous uh, National Geographic a uh, photograph of uh, a girl in Afghanistan with these like piercing green eyes. If you dissect the frame, her the 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 T line of her eyes so it goes right through uh, both of her eyes on the on from horiz horizontally from uh, right to left or left to right, and then both of her eyes are also on those power point lines uh, on the verticals. So the the challenge this week is to take or this two weeks is to take uh, a photograph of something uh, in your shop, or it can be out of your shop, but something related to creating, uh, making, woodworking, metalworking, leatherworking, what have you, um, and, and photograph it with the rule of thirds uh, in mind. And if I did a terrible job explaining rule of thirds, it's a, it's a well-written about uh, compositional element. You can just Google it. Cool. So you have uh, two weeks to get that in. You just have to go on to Instagram and use the hashtag creators photo challenge. And uh, next week will be uh, mine. So I'll probably be giving away a card scraper if I have any in stock. Otherwise, it'll probably be a t-shirt. Um, so yeah, uh, go on to Instagram, use the hashtag creators photo challenge, and you'll be entered into the, uh, the judging competition. <laughs> uh let's see we do have a joke of the week nice uh <clears throat> michael jolson 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 maybe i don't know jolson jolson <laughs> yeah i i uh, i saw a car once with uh with a wooden <clears throat> engine a wooden engine yeah uh it wouldn't run <laughs> uh, i like that they one. just keep getting worse and worse i love it <laughs> That was, that was really like, good. I'm still feeling for rock bottom with every joke, and it, yes. we just keep we keep getting closer, which is exactly what we want. So, if you have a uh, joke of the week you'd like to have read, uh, feel free to send it one to us, and we'll uh, we'll see if we can we'll see if it's bad enough to put on here. <laughs> uh, oh, I wanted to before I forget, I'm gonna pump my Maker Shirt Monday hashtag because I'm really starting to get. Yes. trying to get that off the ground i think because i'm sure everybody's familiar with the follow me friday and stuff and you know if you're if you're uh no stranger to the community you know what a great community it is and i'm always looking for opportunities to uh you know help other people along and and, and kind of direct people's attention to to new creators and i think the maker shirt monday is a great opportunity to do that so um Every Monday, if you guys don somebody else's uh, or your own, if that's all you have, um, somebody's shirt and post it on Instagram with hashtag uh, Maker Shirt Monday, that would be awesome. And also, FYI, for anybody who's been waiting for shirts from me, 
Uh, they showed up yesterday. I'm going to the post office right after this, and um, I'm already sold out of large gray shirts. It's crazy. I put I made a post on Instagram yesterday <laughs> about my new shipment of shirts that showed in, and then within like another 20 minutes, I was already sold out of the large gray shirts. So, yeah, I had uh, I had <clears throat> card scrapers, and I had uh, 25 of them, and they sold out within a couple hours. And I ordered 50 more, and I'm almost out of those. Um, so they're <laughs> yeah people like them that's great wow Good well problem. yeah I, i'm gonna auction off uh this dogwood bowl so you know i might sell out of that too i don't know <laughs> how many and, and pretty fast he only has uh, one left. Uh, yeah i only have the one so wow yeah. only one you're down to the last one I'm down to the last one yep wow nice yeah uh hey so just because uh i have this outlet to tell my crappy jokes uh, this joke was, I was so proud of it. It came to me like instantly, uh, and it was lost on my almost three-year-old daughter and my wife who's reading a book and not paying attention. But I'm going to say it out here just because I can. So my daughter was asking, I was playing and she said, you're a cow. And I said, okay, moo. And then she said, okay, now you're a horse. And I said, okay, nay. And then she was, now you're a cow and a horse. And I said, a cow and a horse. And she said, mm-hmm. And then she said, what's your name? And I said, Claude. She said, Claude. I said, mm-hmm. Claude Mounet. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I was really proud of myself and the two women. That, in that was there. right. That was all that was all you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> that's 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 really good. It's clever. <laughs> uh, so, Will, other than other than weird <laughs> jokes, uh, what's been inspiring you this week? God, that's, that's terrible. I love it. Uh, I was really proud of that one. Um, that's really good. I'm proud, I'm proud of you. That was, that was good. Thank you. Thank for you. you. Uh, so, um, recently, I just found Outdoors 55 on YouTube, um, and I've been wanting to make a knife for a long time, and he actually made a knife using only an angle grinder and uh, really just kind of simplified it into giving me no more excuses why I can't make a knife. Um, and he made a simple forge for heat treating out of some fire brick and a map gas torch, which I've got a map gas torch and I can get fire brick. Uh, so it was just really inspiring to see a, a minimal tool uh, build using only an angle grinder. Uh, and it's just a good channel too. So outdoors fifty five. Sweetness. I like yeah. That. James, well, I've got uh, Anne of All Trades, um, a channel that uh, I started watching what, three or four months ago. Um, not a huge channel yet, but uh, she will Her be. Her Instagram very is huge, though. Yeah, she's yeah. got a huge Instagram following. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where she's going, but she's right now doing, uh, she's making a, a hook knife for carving, um, particularly like uh, spoon carving. Yeah. I saw that and, one. Uh, a really simple project that you can you know do with a blowtorch and a, a ball peen hammer and be done with it. Um, I just, it was, it's a, it's a tool that scares a lot of woodworkers because it, it seems so intricate. And so, um, Ornate, but it's a very simple thing to make, and she did a really, really cool job of, of explaining. Isn't she a professor at like SCAD or Pratt or RISD or? I don't know. Maybe a guest lecturer. She's so sorry. You dogs are going crazy in the background. Hold on a second. You carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Uh, I thought I thought she at least did classes at some art school. I don't know. Well, uh, since we're waiting for him, why don't we jump into our favorite tool of the week? Okay. What cool. you got, Will? So um, this was sent to me by the company um, to try out, and I I gotta say I'm blown away. Um, it's the Axun A1 three axis gimbal. Um, for DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. And at first, it, I thought it was just a knockoff uh, Zhiyun crane, which if you're in the photo video world, um, you might be familiar with. But um, so they sent it to me. It's like 500 bucks. 
which is kind of a steep price tag for something to hold your camera. But the stabilization, once you have the camera balanced, the stabilization is really, really impressive. It's got a bunch of different modes. Um, so you can, you know, just with the turn of a wrist uh, or up and down, you can make it turn or go up or go down. Um, but the thing that I found most helpful was there's an app that goes along with this gimbal. Um, so you open it up on your phone and you can set points of motion. Um, so I can set up a shot where I'm in my shop and I'm going to mark a line or something uh, that's kind of, you know, somewhat boring um, and add motion to the shot where I can start at point A and finish at point B over a duration of hours, minutes, seconds, whatever mm -hmm. I want. Um, and it's just, it's, and it's small and it has its own little tripod base so I can set it on my workbench or I can set it on another tool. Uh, and it's just really giving me some awesome versatile shots. Uh, so yeah, the Axun A1 gimbal. Fun. Yeah. Uh, okay, so back. backtracking a little bit. Um, oh, sh crap. I just hit the wrong button and blew something up. Yeah, what are you watching? Um, <laughs> well, I was going to add to... I like I full screen on the chat and now I can't make it small. Um, <laughs> okay, there we go. I got it. Um, so yeah, Anne of all That's trades. Awesome. Just to, uh, going back to that, it, it's crazy. So she's in the north. I talk with her a little bit on Instagram occasionally, and uh, I was blown away that she lives in Seattle. And if you guys follow her Instagram and stuff, you're like, you wait a minute, you live on a farm in Seattle? Yes, I didn't know that was possible i'm a pacific northwest person and there's there are no farms in seattle but anyway but yeah she's she's really cool uh i've met her a few times in person so i was just reinforcing whoever's choice that was um my choice for the week is well i want you to click on this because i'd love to hear your input um okay where's his name <clears throat> uh Albin, Albin Shodin, A L B I N uh, S J O D I N. And I think he's like a director of photography or something or some filmog filmographer. He's a, he's a videographer. He's a DOP. Okay. Yeah. A director of photography. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Anyway, I just, if you go on his Instagram, it's just the aesthetic and everything. And it's just, it's like my favorite type of everything. It's like dark and blue and gray and moody. And uh, it's just fun to look at. I'm like, I'd love to figure out how to, it's probably, I probably live in the worst part of the country to try and have that sort of look <laughs> to my videos. Cause it's always so bright and washed out sunny here. Uh, but you know, I'd love to try and figure out how to incorporate some of that kind of stylistic um look into some of my stuff and i'm sure once i you know if we end up moving to the oregon coast i won't have to do anything because that's exactly how it looks all the time but uh that's that's my follow for the week so cool. well what's your, no, your favorite product then oh uh, uh well what you what do you think of that stuff by the way oh. uh i think it's def it's it's beautiful um he's definitely got a style uh it's definitely it's definitely see a theme of you know, square frame, subject in the middle with uh, lines kind of chopping up the frame. Um, he uses lines to create motion a lot. Uh, I Yeah, I think it's beautiful, beautiful stuff. I think it's definitely uh, somebody to, to aspire to be like. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what's next? Our... our tool yeah we, uh, we already talked about will's product oh. week what's yours mine is the I, I don't think i've actually chosen it yet maybe i have it's the the coal ironworks forging hydraulic forging press um so this was actually i finally got caught up this was the first week that i've actually had time to um use it for forging stuff i mean i've pretty much since i got it delivered i've only been able to like crush wood in cans and just mess around like a little kid on it but this week i actually finally got to properly heat up metal and smush it into things and it's just unbelievable uh i mean these 
the amount of time like these hammers i've made i think i've made two on it since i got it and uh just how fast things happen on it i mean you can like the eyes for these hammers if you were to do this by hand it would probably take you you know or it would take me probably a couple hours it's seriously about 15 seconds on the press uh so i've made two hammers and a set of tongs in just messing around in a couple of days that probably would have taken me a full week to do without it. So just the, the possibilities and what's great is that you can mess up so fast on a press instead of messing up so slow by hand. I mean, that sounds, (laughs) and what I, I don't mean that you're more apt to mess things up on a press, which I'm sure you are, but when it's your first time building something, uh, or forging something, you're probably going to screw it up. So I can get all the screw ups out of the way really, really fast on the press. <laughs> so as far as like product refinement, I can make all of the mistakes in design and form and get that out of the way really quick. So it's, it's just an amazing tool. And I really look forward to, uh, doing some videos and getting, getting to use that. So yeah, that's my choice. Well, I've got to go with, uh, since we were talking about cheap clamps, uh, good clamps, I'm going to go with the 60-inch aluminum F-style bar clamp from Harbor Freight. Um, and I, 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 If you know anything about my clamps, they're all traditional old wooden bar clamps, and I absolutely love them. But running into this table, I got ready for the glue up. I got the glue out, and I got all jointed up, and I realized that none of my clamps were long enough. And I could have gone to the store and bought a bunch of bar clamps, and I was thinking about doing that, but uh, Harbor Freight had a sale on these for 10 bucks a piece for 60-inch long clamps. And uh, they're, they're, they look kind of like a parallel clamp. They work kind of like a parallel clamp, uh, except for the bar is aluminum, so it's a little more flexible. Um, and so they don't, they don't work quite as well as a parallel clamp. But for 10 bucks, it's just it's dirt cheap, and I am, I'm actually really impressed with them, so... That is my my tools a week in a pinch. Um, they work really well and are are well worth the money in my mind. I have uh, I've got a bunch of F style clamps in my shop, you know, from garage sales and whatever. Anytime I see a clamp, I I buy it. Um, but I've noticed that the F style clamps, because there's so much flexibility in the in the well, bar, they're, they're or, not F style clamps like what you're thinking of an X style clamp with a, with a with uh, a solid okay. bar. Um, they're the uh, extruded C beam like you get with the the other Harbor Freight clamps. They just have a longer jaw on them. Uh, but they call them F-style right for some reason. Rather than parallel clamp. <laughs> oh, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. Do you find that they jam up at all? Um, I've got the Rockler version of that, uh, and one of the things already broke. Um, I have not had that they, problem, but I've only used them one time. Okay, because they kind of like bind up uh, when they get they bind up on the uh, on the bar. Mm. But uh, yeah, we will see how time tells. But I, I really don't have much use for these long, long clamps, um, except for when doing big tables. <laughs> most of the time, all my regular wooden bar clamps are are plenty long. Most of those are thirty-two to forty inches. Uh, but 40 inches is not long enough for my table. So, oops. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, uh, you have uh, used up an, almost an entire hour this time. Wow, we've uh, we've, we've been talking. <laughs> so uh, get your, uh, your uh, creator's photo challenge hashtags in for two weeks from today. And if you'd like to join us live in the live chat, we record every Thursday at uh, uh, 9 Central, 10 Eastern. And looking forward to having you there. We pull most of the, uh, the the questions right from the live chat. Again, I want to say a huge thank you to our patrons on Patreon, particularly Darren Mates. Uh, you are really helping us do some of the things we want to do in the future. So uh, that about does it for this week. And until next time, have a wonderful day. See you later. Adios. <laughs>